Hey monkeys, it's Jim from Small Time Outlaws bringing you the 8th video in the simple game programming tutorial series. In this video we're going to be implementing the multiple player action we've all been waiting for. And uh, thankfully, the way we've written our code is in such a way that it's actually going to be quite simple to add multiple players. So let's go starting in our, let's go back to our player class inside the falling module here and we're going to add some more fields the first one we're going to go with the player name just so we can differentiate between the players decide who wins and another field and this is going to be a flag a boolean and it's going to store whether or not this player is dead and then once all the all the players are dead then the game ends and so we can differentiate differentiate between the players temporarily on the screen we're going to give each player a different color value when we create them so we go ahead and comment here just so you know these are temporary fields and then we're going to have one color r for their that player's r value or red value the green value and the blue value and then we're going to change the constructor so it adds a name coming in and then these color values as well so it's getting kind of long but it's temporary once we once we start drawing images all these fields are going to go away so, and then the blue oops. and then let's go ahead and set all these so self.name is assigned name self dot color r sign color r yeah. yeah there we go and down in the reset we want to have these players come back to life when they're reset so we're going to set that is dead to false so they're no longer dead and now down in our draw we're going to change this so it uses these colors And color red, green, and blue. And now we're going back to our main file inside our falling game class. We're going to add, we're going to actually swap out this line here for a field that's just going to be a, a list of players. So we can have as many players as we want. We just all we have to do is just add them to a list and it's going to run through the list and do all the controls and updating and drawing for each one. So it's going to be pretty cool. So now once we've done this, we're, we want to initialize with a couple players. We're just going to do two for now. So down in the on create, we're going to have players, add last, and then a new player. And this one's going to be our player one, and we'll have them on the left side of the keyboard. So they'll use the A key and the D key. And then they're going to start out on the left, more to the left of the screen. So we'll say 200. And then we'll, we'll center them at the top. So 32. And then the next field, I believe, was name. So its name is going to be Steve. And then his color, we're going to keep it green for him. Eh, let's do a dark green. Oops, and another parenthesis. And now let's go ahead and copy this. And we're going to add another player to our list. And this player is going to use the left and right keys and shift over 200 pixels and we're gonna name this one yeah add a girl for equality's sake and we're gonna make it darkish let's make it a lightish red now in here in our on update instead of just updating player one which actually doesn't exist anymore we're gonna run through our player uh, player list with the each in loop and you better get used to writing this each in loop because we're going to do it quite a, <laughs> a few more times so now and first we need to check and make sure the player isn't dead because otherwise you know if they're dead we don't want to draw them on the screen we're just going to stop drawing them all together that's how you'll know they're dead and so if what if not is dead sorry about that so we're going through each one, assigning each player to this player. 
variable and then checking if the player is dead and then we're going to pass player to update player for each player in our game and now we want to render each player in the game so instead of player one dot draw we're going to let's go ahead and copy that those first couple lines or excuse me this one's actually updating player so it's got nothing to do with drawing but we still don't want to update the player either we want to just be completely done so let's go into let's see where was I okay the player one dot draw let's copy these first two lines and then if they're not dead change that to player so it's using this player object here and then both And now just down here, now that we don't we gotta show scores for everybody. And so for each player, and this time we want to go ahead and leave the score up there so they can see what they're trying to beat and whatnot. For each one, we're gonna say we we'll use the player name instead of score here. So we'll player dot name plus this string. And it's gonna be player dot score. And we're gonna for simplicity's sake, we're just gonna throw it above the spot that they start. So player dot position or say original position. <laughs> position that would actually be pretty funny. But we'll go with original position. And then the top of the screen and then we're gonna center it vertically at that position, that X position. And and that I see I know there's more places we've got player one down in the reset should be. There we are, reset. Now we're going to go through for each player. We're going to reset it and we get rid of that line. So we're going to run through each player and reset them. It's pretty fun, right? I'm having fun. And then finally we need to set that is dead when that player dies. So we're going to go here and say player dot is dead assigned true and now this should be ready to run so cross your fingers click build and run oh oh man I was getting away with that this whole time why didn't you tell me so yeah we need to take that out so it uses this player coming in that was a bad mistake okay try this again oh no oh okay this is getting ridiculous. Okay, we're going to comment that out. I'm just trying to run it. Ah, here we go. Okay, so we got Sally here. We got Steve here. And they're both using different keys. And they can both play the game at the same time. And now Sally's about to die. And they both died at the same time. That was pretty sweet. Let's try that again. Actually, for right now, if anybody dies, we are resetting it to game state to state death right now. So... We don't want to do that, of course, so let's go ahead and fix that. So what we're going to do to fix that is every time a player dies, we are going to create a field, first of all. And this field is going to be called uh, dead players. So every time a player dies, we're just going to increase this by one. And then once this dead players equals the uh, number of players in our player list, then we'll know it's time to go to screen to the death screen. So now that we have this dead players here, we're going to go down into let's see into update player. We take this out because we don't want to do that anymore. And then we're going to say dead players plus equals one. And then we got to go up to our reset method and set that dead players back to zero when we reset so everybody's alive again and now in our on update we need to check so let's find our on update right here on update uh, after we update all of the players well, we'll go ahead and throw it at the bottom so let's say if dead players equals the number of players in our list so players dot count if they are the same, we're going, then we're going to set our game state to state death, and it'll go to this, the death screen. And now we need to go into the death screen in our on render method, and change this, delete this. I want to change this whole section, and we're gonna check all the scores, 
and display the winning player's name and score. So what we're going to do is create a local variable called winning player and this is going to store the current winning player. And we'll save. And now we're going to go through all of our players once again. I do each in players and say if well first we want to check because right now this winning player isn't assigned to anything because there's no current winning player so if it's null if winning player is null which is its default state then it's going to set the first player to be the winning player by default or otherwise we're going to check uh, the current player score if it's greater than the current winning player score so we're going to say if the player the current player score that comes in from here from the list is greater than the last or the current winning player score then we're going to set the winning player to that player now we've got that's going to run through the whole list and find the player with the highest score and once we've done that let's go ahead and well, we're going to set the some nice color coding. So we're going to set the color to the winning player's color R and green, red and green and blue values. Winning player dot color blue. And then we're going to draw the winning player's name and say something like eh, as one. And then we're going to put that in the middle of the screen and align it vertically and then just below that we will s draw what their score was and say winning player dot score and so it's just underneath and then finally we're to say that let's reset this color back to white and then print you know plus enter to play again and now let's run this and this should be working so as we can see Sally okay we're gonna have Steve win so he's down below Sally just died now Steve's gonna die and it's game over Steve has won he had 941 points so let's let's try this again so let's say it's a race to get to the bottom oh Sally won even though it looked like you know Steve might have won he was lower but actually you know, the camera dropped and allowed Sally to fall just a little bit farther, and so she won. So, so that's that's it. It's pretty cool, huh? And you know, if you have some time, you can go back in here. We're going to be adding more players later on, but if, you know, if you go in here, you can just add as many players as you want with as many different keys as you want, different colors and names and everything, and you have a bunch of players playing on your screen, and you only have one person on a joystick one person using the mouse it could, you know it's it could become absolute absolute madness but that's going to do it for this video join me in the next one if you have any questions email me at jim at smalltimeoutlaws.com or leave some comments down below